lecture on uh, the introduction to hypothesis testing. I'm going to have one of these lectures that basically just goes over this sheet and says what you need to be doing each week. So um, just make sure that you read through this, what you need to be doing as far as reading the introduction to business uh, statistics book uh, right here. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, to open it. But this is a new book. Um, and so this book right here uh, tells us essentially, um, let's see here. This book right here is going to uh, give us access to uh, the all the content on hypothesis testing. Notice that chapter 9 is over the single sample hypothesis testing, chapter 10 is two samples hypothesis testing, and then chapter 11 is the chi-squared uh, distribution hypothesis testing. And so we're going to, right now, uh, just going over the introduction to hypothesis testing, which is uh, 9.1, 9.2, and 9.3. Okay, so also read through this entire overview sheet and then uh, watch these YouTube videos. Um, and these YouTube videos will help you to thoroughly understand everything about uh, hypothesis testing, at least the introduction to it. And then uh, complete the homework problems on this sheet. And then you need to su uh, submit a picture or file of the completed homework problems and worksheet. And then uh, last but not least, complete the intro to hypothesis uh, testing quiz. Now if you go to Canvas, which I'm going to go to Canvas really quick, give me just one second, it's going to log me in. I've got Canvas right here, I'm going to go to our Canvas shell and uh, you will see uh, we are under Unit 4 Hypothesis Testing. And you'll notice uh, week 1, week 1, week 2, week 2, week 2, uh, week three, and then, uh, yeah. So um, this is what it looks like in the Unifor Hypothesis Testing. Um, and if we click on the week one intro to hypothesis testing, um, just walk through everything. It's going to say, hey, you know, it's the same exact um, thing that you just read. Um, on this sheet, the exact same thing, but and it goes through these six steps. That's all that's going to be listed there, and so it's listed there, um, and it's also uh, the link for it is also there. So as you uh, go through this, uh, just make sure that you um, you know come through onto Canvas um, and uh, click on the links, and uh, you'll be able to access uh, you'll be able to access this. Um, on uh, on Canvas, everything to turn it in and, and so on and so forth. And so when you click on it, it'll just open up right there and you'll be able to watch it. Um, so let's go back to uh, this sheet right here. Uh, you got your vocabulary right here. This is something that you can uh, just walk through uh, by yourself. There's a lot of uh, uh, vocabulary. Also, the videos thoroughly explain all of this vocabulary, uh, those videos that you just saw. Uh, these are the different types of tests that we're going through. Uh, single sample, independent sample, paired sample, chi-squared, goodness of fit, hypothesis test, and then also test for independence. Uh, right now we're starting out with uh, single sample hypothesis test, um, and then uh, in just a couple weeks we'll be into chi-squared. And then down here, this is where our homework is. Um, and so it's an actual, you know, worksheet. And so, um, you know, going through this worksheet, it seems like there's a lot, um, but I promise you it's really not that bad. So right now, and let me show you one more thing. This, this part of the wor worksheet right here, this part of the worksheet is actually explained in one of the videos, in one of the videos that are actually in Canvas. So this video right here, the very first video, the 10-1 hypothesis testing video, uh, thoroughly explains every single last bit of it. So, um, yeah, just be aware of that. And, uh, yeah. So, moving back up to the top. Let's go through the homework. So, you've got to do 2, 15, and 16. So, the very first question, uh, it says, You are testing that the mean speed of your cable internet uh, connection is more than 3 megabits per second. State the null and the alternative hypothesis. Now, right now, I would suggest that you watch uh, those videos that I have listed, but um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, help you go through this. But, um, you know, 
uh, this video right here going through the homework um, is often uh, much better if you uh, watch the other supplemental videos before you get into the homework. Um, so, but let's go ahead and watch, uh, let's, let's go through this. So you are testing that the uh, mean speed of your cable internet connection is more than three megabits per second. State the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis uh, means there is no difference between uh, the sample and pop and the alternative is there is a is a difference between the sample and pop so how would we do that so the alternative hypothesis or so the the null hypothesis saying that there is no difference um we're going to write it as let's see here uh you are testing the mean speed of your cable bet and cable internet connection is more than three megabits per second. So th what is the population? The population is your uh, internet speed. Okay. Um, or basically... Uh, yeah. Your, your internet speed. Um, and so that's the population. Um, it's the uh, it's what's dependent. It's the dependent uh, variable and what it's dependent on. Um, population dependent variable is your internet speed. Uh, it is dependent on the fact that it it is yours. Um, there would be some other instances, like for instance, if I were to compare your internet speed to somebody else's internet speed, um, you know, it would be dependent on your the fact that it's yours compared to somebody else's. But right now we've got one uh, dependent uh, variable and the independent variable, if you will, is the fact that uh, it is yours. Um, so it's dependent on the fact that it's yours, therefore, uh, the independent variable is uh, that is you. Okay, so alternative hypothesis, or sorry, the the uh, null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says, um, and we're going to copy this from right here. Control C. Um, your internet speed, the population of your internet speed, is, and we're testing. We want to see. Um, if it's more than three megabits per second. So the alternative hypothesis is, is it less than or equal to three megabits per second? Okay. And then the alternative hypothesis, what we actually believe to be true is that the, uh, that your internet speed is greater than three megabits per second. Okay, so let's write this out in words. Um, your internet speed is less than or uh, equal to three megabits uh, megabits per second. Okay, and then uh, the alternative hypothesis is your internet speed is greater than. Uh, three megabits per second. Okay, um, and so you'll notice uh, that is um, the alternative hypothesis is basically saying, hey, uh, we want to know if this is true. So in order to test whether or not it's true, we have to test the opposite of it. Um, and so let's uh, do just a little bit more information here. Uh, this right here um, the next question that I'm going to ask is, is this an upper tail or lower tail test? Um, and also, uh, so uh, this right here, the alternative hypothesis, um, the alternative hypothesis will always point in the direction of the tail. So you have whatever it is that you're testing on the left-hand side of the equation, whatever you're comparing it to on the right-hand side of the equation, and the direction arrow uh, is pointing uh, towards the upper tail. 
Okay, so uh, I'm gonna come down here a little bit. Um, let's see here. So we've got this normal distribution. Uh, we've got this normal distribution, and the normal distribution, um, what we're testing right now is we're saying, hey, is the internet speed greater than three megabits per second? Is it greater than three megabits per second? And so um, we're going to bring this right here and we'll get into tcrit and so on and so forth in a, in a little bit. But uh, we're gonna bring this right here and we're gonna say, what is it, uh, you know, is it anywhere on this line or greater? What is it, is it anywhere on this line or greater? Therefore, it's an upper tail test. It's an upper tail test. If we said, hey, we wanna know if it's less than three megabits per second, then it would be a lower tail test. And we would put this right here and we'd say, okay, it's a lower tail test. And we would change all of this up here as well. Um, and so it is an upper tail test because the alternative hypothesis is going in the direction of that. Okay, uh, it is pointing towards the, uh, the upper tail. Next, uh, I'm gonna ask you some questions. Uh, questions about alpha level significance and uh, it just it should be significance and alpha levels. Um, I don't know why it's yeah. Um, so I want to be ninety five percent confident in my results. What is my alpha level? Okay. If I want to be ninety five percent confident in my results, oh, it should say about type one error. Sorry, type one error significance and alpha level. Okay. So if I want to be 95% confident in my results, what is my alpha level? And um, uh, so when we when we do this, uh, we have uh, certain words that we use, certain terms, and these terms are you know alpha, uh, type one error, or the probability uh, that you say that you got something but you did not actually get something, um, and then also significance or confidence. Um, and so if I want to be 95% confident that my result is correct, uh, what is my alpha level? And all of these are pretty much the exact same thing. So if it's 95% confident that my result is correct, the alpha level is going to be 0.05. Okay, next. Um, control underline, there we go. Next, we have this right here stands for alpha level, okay? If my alpha level is 0.01, what is the level of significance? The level of significance is 0.01, okay? And the only reason why I'm doing this is really just to demonstrate this is all pretty much the exact same thing, okay? And for some odd reason, let's see here, Times New Roman, switch that out. There we go. Uh, and then the probability of committing type one error is uh, 5%. What is the alpha level? The alpha level is once again, 0.05. So we've got 0.05 for the alpha level. Um, and so just be very aware that type one error, significance and alpha level are all pretty much the exact same thing. Um, and that's the reason why we did that. So now we're gonna go through 15 and 16, and then I'm gonna go through this uh, six step hypothesis uh, testing, and then uh, we'll call it a day on this lecture. Uh, a group of doctors is deciding whether or not to perform an operation. Suppose the null hypothesis uh, H sub uh, zero, and we're going to, there we go, is the surgical procedure will go well. State the type one error and the type two errors in complete sentences. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's let's go here, let's see. Uh, we're going to go to hypothesis testing with one sample, and we're going to go to nine two, type one error and type two error. Okay, so right here, type one error is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true, okay? So rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. So coming back here, uh, we've got to uh, understand what the null and alternative hypothesis are, okay? So the null hypothesis is the surgical procedure will go well. So um, type one error is rejecting that when it's actually true, okay? So is rejecting the idea uh, that the surgical procedure 
will go well when in fact it uh in fact the surgical procedure procedure will go well okay so let's type one error so it's rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true okay and then going back let's come right here so uh, type 2 error is the probability of not rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is false. Okay, so uh, type 2 error. Okay, so type 2 error is the probability of not rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is false. So in other words, type 2 error is um, not rejecting the idea that the surgery uh, will go well um, when in fact the surgery will not. Uh, so more practically speaking, type two error is saying uh, we think that the surgery is going to go okay, but it's actually not going to go okay. Um, so that's uh, that's type two error. Um, so let's let's bring that just one step further. A group of doctors is deciding whether or not to perform an operation. Uh, same thing. Um, suppose the null hypothesis is that the surgery surgical procedure will uh, go well. Uh, so um, which is the error with the greater consequence, type one or type two error? So let's take a look at these. Type 1 error is rejecting the idea that the surgical procedure will go well when, in fact, it, uh, it will go well. Um, so what's the consequence here? Uh, consequence is, well, they run the surgical procedure. Um, in other words, you're like, hey, I think that, you know, the, the likelihood of you surviving this is pretty low. Uh, but you pull through and you survive it. Great. So the consequence is you live. Um then looking at this, you go into a surgery and you're like, hey, there's really not much risk in this. There's like a 5% chance that something's going to go wrong. Um, but then you get into the surgery, there's complications and, uh, you know, you don't make it. So what's the uh, consequence? The consequence is that uh, the problem is not fixed. Uh, or worse. So uh, the one with the bigger consequence of the two of these is type 2 error in this situation. Type 2 error is the one with uh, greater consequence um, or should we say uh, more detrimental consequences. Um, I don't really like uh, saying greater or less than because that's subjective. Uh, so I, I would actually say with more uh, with more detrimental consequence. Come. Okay. So um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this part right here because I have an entire video on this. But uh, we have a six-step uh, hypothesis testing process. And so I have every single last bit of it laid out right here. Uh, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six. And then there's an entire video. And if you go right here, uh, let's see here, to Canvas. Oops. Yep. Uh, this video right here, uh, like I said, goes over the entirety of uh, this portion. So just make sure that you do that and uh, you thoroughly understand how that works. Uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much it.